Hello everybody, welcome back. Roger says hey. Scarlet is right below me. I'll say hey for her. So I have a much smaller PO box opening than my last like massive one that I, you know, took three hours to uh, to open. But this is a... still got a decent number of things to open, but much smaller stack. And um, really appreciate you guys sending all of this stuff. Looking forward to it. I do have even more packages waiting for me at the P.O. box, my post office. Uh, I went yesterday to pick them up, but the line was super long. It looked like I was going to be standing in line for like 30 minutes or something. So I just thought, well, I'll come back next week when, when they've got more people working. So we're just going to go ahead and uh, do what I've got for right now. We have, starting off, we have two postcards from Marvin. Unfortunately, I posted a picture of these on my community posts on YouTube and it got, like, the, the comments on it got political because of the pictures on the cards. I don't want to get political with stuff on my channel at all. I want to keep everything, you know, positive on my channel as much as possible. So Marvin actually created these cards himself and he told me that he was a big fan of like uh, Victorian style and design and stuff. And so he modeled these postcards after like I think some Victorian postcards. Anyway, Marvin, you have a lot of talent for putting uh, postcards together. So I think you did a good job. This one has the uh, lyrics to Land of Hope and Glory there. If you guys can see that. We have the lion, which I know is like the mascot basically of England. <laughs> I don't know if that's what you call it, a mascot or not, but I guess like the symbol, like the eagle is the symbol for the United States. I don't know what the lady is exactly. It looks like a Greek goddess or something. I'm not sure. And then we have basically red showing, I guess, the Commonwealth. And on the back, he wrote a little message. It's a very fine cursive, so bear with me, Marvin and everybody else, as I try to. I can read cursive, but um, this is it's really good handwriting, <laughs> actually. It's just kind of hard to read on here, I guess. I am an Anglophile, I think is what he says, who has studied English slash British history and its monarchy formally and semi-formally from the University of Exeter, University of Le uh, Leicester. I started watching your videos two months ago. I do apologize for the small penmanship. <laughs> Yeah, that's why it's kind of hard to read. Um, I shall send a letter soon, Marvin. Well, that's really cool, Marvin. I didn't know that uh, you had actually studied like British history and stuff at university level, so that's pretty cool. And you don't have to apologize for the writing. I really enjoy, I really like your handwriting. And I appreciate you watching my videos. I will keep it up. And he's got a second card too. This one is like that right there. I don't know if you can see. Uh, again, it's just like a map of the, the Commonwealth and the Queen's Platinum Jubilee right here, which I will be probably, I don't know if I'll live stream the um, troop, Trooping of the Color, I think is what it's called, right? I haven't done a video on that yet. And I've had a lot of people ask me to do one. I don't know if I'll live stream it or not. It would be kind of fun to live stream it, but the problem is it's probably going to be like the BBC and they're probably not going to let me live stream that. So I don't know. I'm going to do a video on it regardless, but I'll have to figure that out. So the back of this card says, Dear Sarah, the queen shall rejoice in thy strength, maybe? Oh Lord. Uh, Platinum Jubilee. Can't quite make, up this, make out this word, but something like celebrations will happen throughout the year and especially in May, June. God bless the queen. God bless us everyone. Marvin. And then down below it says, um, P.S. I recommend you watch the series or react to Edward the Seventh. Is that there's a series called Edward the Seventh? Okay. Well, I'll have to make a note of that. I'm gonna make a note of it right now, actually. He's got Indonesia uh, stamps on here. I just realized that. Wait, do you live in Indonesia then, Marvin? Oh, that's cool. I didn't. I didn't even notice that at first. I just assumed that they were uh, British stamps, but no, they're all. Indonesian. All right, well, very cool. Thank you, Marvin. Really appreciate the um, thoughtfulness that went into this, and I'm glad you watched the videos, and I will look for your letter, I guess. Okay, this letter is from Dallas, actually, so an American. I do not get too many uh, things in the mail from Americans because they make up a very, very small portion of my viewers. Thing is, though, there are a lot of Brits here in the U.S. that watch my channel, so this could be somebody who's actually British, or maybe from another country. Seifu um, Makuria, I think is the name. 
I'm not sure. Okay, so this letter um, says, Hi Sogal, my name is Sa Seifu. I hope I'm saying that correctly. And I live in Dallas, Texas. I came to know about you through a few reaction videos you did on football, parentheses soccer, on YouTube. As a football fan, I have enjoyed your reaction and also learned some things from your presentations. Well, that's good. Uh, my interests also include the universe, history, and global issues. I think we have common interests in finding the truth, beauty, and reality in human conditions. Yep, exactly. That's exactly it. That gives me the courage to write to you. Here's my curiosity. Dr. Barbara Thiering has written three books on the history of Jesus Christ. All throughout her books, she has presented a well-researched and documented evidences on the life of the man Jesus Christ. However, an impress as impressive as her research is, her work has been ignored and suppressed by influential scholars of divinity, and her work is not receiving the attention it deserves. In her three books, Dr. Thiering has presented tangible evidences showing that Jesus was a man, a married slash remarried man, survived the crucifix, and died in Rome at the age of 73. Okay. <laughs> Have not heard this uh, version of Jesus before. Um, there is a website dedicated to her works. His name is the Pesher Technique. I understand this is not as easy as reacting to videos. It requires a bit more reading. Would you look into it? Dr. Thiering's books are Jesus of the Apocalypse, the book that Jesus wrote, and Jesus the Man. All right, well, this is definitely a different topic. Um, I don't really, I haven't gotten into religion really at all on my channel. I try to stay away from religion and politics just because people disagree so much on them and I I just don't like to see a bunch of fighting and arguing and bickering in the comments on my videos and stuff and I don't want to like alienate a bunch of my viewers because I'm sure we all have differing opinions on things so that's why I try to not you know do videos strictly on those things too much I have not heard about this I mean I I am a Christian I did grow up in the church and was taught, you know, the biblical version of Jesus. Had not heard this version of it before. It's really interesting to think about though. And, you know, I'm open-minded. I'm willing to look into more research and, you know, see what evidence there is out there and see what um, other people think about it. So so I think it could be a really um, interesting topic. I do agree with you, Seifu. We have a very, very similar interests and I think ways of thinking about things. So I think that's really cool. Uh, thank you for taking the time to write this and send it to me. And uh, I will look into these books. I appreciate you bringing the topic to my attention. Oh, we have a third postcard from Marvin. <laughs> Sorry, Marvin. For some reason, I thought there were only two. Okay, so this one has the um, rule Britannia lyrics on it and the similar like the line and the lady. I, I don't know who the lady is. You guys have to let me know on the, in the comments. Okay, so let's read this. We have more um, Indonesia stamps right there. So Dear Sarah, the song Rule Britannia um, has been repeatedly scorned by composers and artists without altering the meaning too much. The version on this postcard is uh, Clara Bull's interpretation. The most frequently altered line is the refrain rule in rule to rolls, I guess. Other alternating, um, I guess, includes the syllable. Uh, I can't quite make out this word. <laughs> I'm sorry, Marvin. I don't, I'm not sure what it, what it is, but he's, he's describing um, additional, uh, he's, he's describing like the A syllable or something in Azure Main, like the rose out of the Azure Main, like that line. I've heard that there are alternate like ways of saying this and somebody, um, I think on one of my other videos brought that up where, um, there's like a debate on whether it should be a rule or rules the waves or something like that. Cause it kind of changes the meaning of it, I guess, but I don't know. I'll leave that debate to you, all of you, <laughs> all of you Britons. Anyway, thank you, Marvin. Sorry I couldn't quite make out the, the last little bit there, but I understand what you're saying basically. So appreciate you sending these. Sorry that there were only two of them for some reason. We have this, um, this handwriting is very familiar to me. I've gotten more letters from him before in the past. Yes, John, this is a long letter, so I'll probably just give you a summary of it. Okay, so basically I'm not gonna really talk about the contents of this letter because it's kind of more of a more personal nature but I just want to say John I really appreciate it I'll probably respond to you on email but just letting you know I got your letter and I just read it and I really appreciate it and uh yeah 
I'll write to you separately. On to the packages now. So let's see what we've got in here. This is from uh, Peter. Uh, looks like Peter is from the UK. Port something. Can't quite make out the last bit of it. And we have a letter. Oh my gosh. I barely cut the edge of the letter when I was cutting the envelope. I didn't think about a letter being inside here. All right, so let's look at the letter first. Oh, he's from Wales. He's from Wales, okay. He says, Dear Sogal, I was a young man when the Falklands War started. I was on holiday in Greece at the time on a sailing holiday. When the news of the war came through, we British young people sang Rule Britannia and the local Greeks nonplussed by it. When I got back to Britain, I saw the war unfold on the television. The war lasted 74 days from start to finish. I have sent you a book to help you understand something of the war, give you some idea of the effort it took to retake the islands and the cost in life and treasure. I hope you will enjoy reading it and it'll give you some great pleasure as well. From someone who enjoyed your YouTube output and has liked and subscribed to your channel. Appreciate that, Peter. I like snail mail because I'm old fashioned and I like to write letters. It's a dying art form. Agreed. Um, I think that writing that is uh, pleasing to the eye is important. That should be preserved with kind regards, Peter. I kind of agree. You and um, you and Marvin kind of have a similar take on that, I guess. Uh, really appreciate it, Peter. Really appreciate you watching my videos. And yes, the Falklands are definitely, that's, that's definitely a conflict that I would like to uh, do more on because I only done, I've only done one video on it, really. There's a lot more to learn about it. Weapons of the Falklands conflict. There we go. <laughs> I definitely need this because I was so confused about carrier strike groups and bombers and all that stuff in that video. So this is like detailed too. This is very technical. Wow. Look at all that. And then it gets into like, I guess more explanation of everything as well, but that's cool. I don't think I've ever seen a, a book that lays out like the technical details like that before. So it goes over the naval battle, the air battle, and the land battle, missile sy systems. This would be fun to look through too, because with the, uh, you know, stuff going on in Ukraine right now, um, you know, I've been keeping on top of that for the most part. Things have kind of slowed down a little bit now, but especially in the first few weeks. It was a real educational experience learning about the different like weapon systems and stuff and kind of some of the history of them and how they're used and all of that. And so it would be interesting, you know, seeing how weapons today are being used over in Ukraine to see how it compares kind of maybe to, to this. So I think that would be really interesting. I, I, for whatever reason, I really like learning about military strategy and stuff. So. Even though I don't personally have any connection to the military, I've had family members serve in the military before, but I don't have any like super close connection to the military. I don't know. It's just one of those things that's always interested me for some reason. Yeah, appreciate it, Peter. I look forward to looking through this and learning more about the Falklands. And I will be doing more videos on the Falklands. I have one bookmarked actually that I see every single time I open up my browser, but um, it's an American general, I think, um, kind of like talking about the whole operation, I guess from more of like a military standpoint, and I would be really interested to, to hear what he says about it because, you know, there were a lot of things that I was kind of confused about in, in the video I watched on it. And so I'm sure that he would probably set me straight on a few things as well. All right, next we have a package from Al Allen. It doesn't say where Allen's from, but we do have a note in here. Thankfully, I think it's a note. Oh, I don't know what that is. We have a bunch of maps, it looks like. All turned around. Oh, this one's folded, that's why. Okay, what am I looking at here? This looks like an old map. I'm seeing a bunch of hun hundreds on here. <laughs> Don't know. <laughs> he lived here in the 80s. Okay, so these are like maps of kind of like his, where he, he's lived and stuff. Buckingham House, later the palace. Okay, so this must be uh, like maps of London, maybe? They look like, yeah, there's London on there. They look like uh, kind of older style maps too. I'm guessing, I don't know. I'm just seeing hundred everywhere on there on the like colored areas. Um, it says like hundred is, this must be London as well then. Cause that must be the Thames, right? Coming through there. I like all the little like tree patches that they have. <laughs> What's the hundred? Why Why are there so many hundred, hundreds listed on these, these maps? About 1560, oh wow. 
Okay, so this is like a map of London in 1560. Right there. So many boats on the Thames, too. Westminster. Oh, he's like marked where some of the stuff is. And then, that's cool. I love old historical maps like this. So you can kind of like see the, you know, how things started out and where they've come. This is a really old map, too. This is Lancashire. I don't, I don't know when it was made, but back in the day. Can you imagine having to hand draw maps like this? So just another one of London right there. You like see the evolution of London. Oh, this is uh, 7, 1760. Okay, I just saw that up there. Not all, I don't think that there are, there's not a date on all of the maps, so I'm not sure exactly when all of them are, but really interesting. Thank you, Alan, for showing that to me, or sending this to me. And let's see, oh, we have a Dad's Army the movie. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Oh, we're definitely watching this on Patreon. Oh, and Great British Railway Journeys are in here too. We're getting back into Dad's Army on Patreon next week. All right, we have a letter here. Ellen says, Sarah, I hope you're feeling tickety-boo. <laughs> As mentioned in the uh, PM, I'm sending a couple of items. One is Dad's Army film DVD to enjoy. And the other DVD is of Michael Cordio's uh, DVD about the impact of the railway on Britain. Yes, I remember your DM. He uses Bradshaw's Railway Guide to Britain in the 1840s to compare the to compare and contrast various towns in England on a railway journey based on the Railway Timetable Bible. Oh, I didn't know that. There was a railway timetable Bible. The spy programs. His first trip starts in Liverpool, where he looks at migration to America. Russia plays a part. On to Manchester where he looks at the cotton industry, then to Scarborough to look at the growth of a seaside resort. I went to Liverpool University, stayed in the hotel in Manchester that MP uses, and my parents honeymooned in Scarborough, so all places I know. Also I'm closing some maps of London around Queen Elizabeth's time to about 150 years later. They show just how small Queenie's London was in Blackadder 2. Oh, this is from the Blackadder era. Okay. In season two of them, anyway. Okay, that makes more sense. On the large map, London is the dark splodge in the middle. Blackadder lived in the Billingsgate near the Tower of London at the right hand side of the splodge. <laughs> Love how he's describing it as a splodge. Queen Elizabeth I lived in Richmond Palace, five squares from the left and five squares up from the bottom. Dark splodge. Blackadder lived somewhere in here. So she lived somewhere down here, I guess. It's really hard for me to like pick out the uh, the names on here because it's really it's a really busy map. The A1 to A6 markings show the old roads that correspond to the modern roads. See how you mark the roads there. We don't bother reinventing things if it was good enough for the Romans. <laughs> It's good enough for us. Just for fun, I've also enclosed a map of, map of Lancashire drawn by the real Queen Elizabeth I advisor, Sir William Cecil, who might have been the inspiration for Melchi on Blackadder. So this this is the one, the, the really old looking one right here. Michael's journey goes across the map from the top left where it shows Tokusteth Park, now Toxteth Park. Oh yeah, I see it up there. Liverpool Chapel down to the bottom where Manchester Church is underlined. Oh yeah. See that? Shows all the big houses and important people most of the names live on in today's towns. Oh, okay. Very good. I'm glad you underlined the Manchester Church because I probably would have never found it. It'd be interesting to take like this map and then like a modern uh, map of Lancashire and overlap them and kind of see like what's the same and what's not. Well, thank you, Alan. I really appreciate it. This is very thoughtful of you to send these maps and uh, so I can kind of see like what things look like black back in Blackadder's time and just kind of get a little bit more feel for what London used to be like back in back in the day. And then also thank you once again for the DVDs, Dad's Army and uh, the Railway Journey. We'll be definitely be doing Dad's Army on Patreon. I'll do the Railway Journey on YouTube if, if it lets me. I'm not sure about the copyright on that yet. And there's another part to his letter, but um, he has it marked private, so I'm not going to read that on camera here but so i just want to say alan i read the uh, other part of your letter and that was a very very touching story i really appreciate you sharing that with me and i look forward to um watching the railway journeys all right last but not least we have this box right here 
I'm really curious about what's in here. This is from, I hope I can read the name. Oh, we have a letter, so maybe I'll be able to uh, make out your name in here. Once again, this is a long letter, so <laughs> probably not gonna read the whole thing. I don't know, we'll see. Colin. Okay, I started with a C, I was like, I don't know what the rest of it is though. Hi Sarah, I hope all is well with you. As a fellow history buff, I've been following your channel for a while now, but this is the first time I've sent something though to you. I really love your content and enthusiasm and have been thoroughly enjoying both learning alongside you. Your videos on Russian history have been fascinating to watch and see you experience new uh, new events and historical issues that I already have knowledge about. Thank you, Colin, I really appreciate that. Whilst watching your channel, I recalled a BBC Radio 4 series that was broadcast over a period of a year back in 2010, and it's this series that I have sent through to you. So um, he goes through here and talks about the uh, different radio stations on the BBC. Basically, if you're in the UK, you, you probably already know all of this stuff. But some of the um, shows on here that he mentions, I have had people, um, I think like the archers, tell me to like uh, listen to that and stuff. A History of the World and 100 Objects, as mentioned above, was broadcast on BBC4 Radio throughout 2010 and was compiled and narrated by the director of the British Museum, Neil McGregor. Each episode, about 12 to 13 minutes long, deals with one object, providing an insight as to how our ancestors used to live. The range of objects span two million years of human history come from all four corners of the earth. It's a genuinely interesting listen, and at the same time, it captured the UK's imagination, providing the radio still has pulling power with people asking what the 100th object would be. I'm aware that it's not something you could potentially react to. I'm guessing it's not easy to react to audio only, but however you listen to it, I hope you find it as fascinating as I did at the time. Oh, you know what? It's just, I was thinking like, uh, DVDs, I was thinking like it's gonna be something to, to like watch, like you could see the objects that they're showing, but you know, it was radio, isn't it? So you would have to like just imagine what they're describing, I guess. All the very best to you, Scarlett and Roger. Say hi back to him for me, please. Colin says hi, Roger. And keep up the very good work. Your channel is an absolute credit to you, Colin. Thank you, Colin. Appreciate that. And let's check out the, the CDs, right? History of the world in 100 objects. Wow. This is gonna be... I don't think I've... Um, I've listened to some radio shows in the past, just very sparingly before, uh, but nothing like this. So this will be very interesting to listen to. It is very thoughtful of you to send this call and I really appreciate it. I'm sure my mind is gonna be absolutely blown because I don't know, it's just crazy. Like stuff that happened in the past, the th stuff that you know people had, the objects that they use, the things that they used to do. Some of it is so alien to us now in the modern world and some of it is exactly the same, <laughs> you know, it's just, really crazy to think about. So yeah, really appreciate it, Colin. I look forward to this. All right, guys, I think that's going to do it. I think that's everything. So a little bit shorter PO box opening than some of my previous ones, but I wanted to go ahead and do this. I didn't want the stuff sitting around for too, too long. So I am going to try and stay on top of this a little bit more. I really appreciate it. Marvin, John, Seifu, Alan, Colin, all of you guys, I really, really appreciate you sending these things to me, taking the time, spending the money to send it, you know. It's very thoughtful of you guys, it's very generous of you, and I love that you want to um, share these things with me. I love learning about all this new stuff that you guys, um, you know, bring into my life. So it means a lot, and you know, I always feel super inadequate <laughs> trying to say thank you on these videos, but thank you. I guess it's time to get back to some learning now on my channel so stay tuned for a lot more videos on uh you know a bunch of topics because i'm interested in like learning about everything basically yeah so stay tuned for all that stuff coming up also make sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video and i do have social media and a podcast link i have a star trek podcast for you trekkies out there and i have a patreon you know videos that i can't do here on youtube more longer form type videos like the dad's army movie so if you're interested in that sort of content um go check out my patreon and uh we'll see you next time